in a BB-8 update. So we've completed some of the withering around the main dome piece. Again, same for the main body. Um, created a, a dolly to be able to test out the actual main rotation of the body itself. It's got a little um, ball socket in there. The main body itself, um, pretty much all of the wiring is now done. So I spent most of the weekend um, just running up basically here's all the, the wiring and the power through each of the motors that one goes to the battery um, the main board up here that's the sound effects board uh, gyro stabilization tried to have that sort of mid mounted in line with the, the dome there on this end got the amplifier which goes off to the speaker Step down transformer through to 7.4 volts for the servos. Um, the H bridges down here for the uh, drive motor side to side and the flywheel motors down there as well. And then added a primary power switch for tuning on down here and voltmeter ammeter in terms of consumption. Um, it's not plugged in, there's no battery attached to it yet, so it doesn't do anything. And that turns it off. So nearly ready, uh, final pieces to go at this stage is wiring up the LEDs on the main body itself. Um, so in here there's some uh, resin, uh, coloured resin filler that goes in, I'd put an LED behind it and that'll light up the, um, the different colour panels on each of those. So I need to wire all of those up. Uh, waiting for a replacement board to come through. I had a faulty uh, power supply that blew one of the boards. Um, so we're going to replace the power supply and the board. And then we get to test it out. So hopefully not too much longer in terms of waiting for parts to arrive. Um, I anticipate probably another month and a half of waiting before I can uh, start testing out and see what changes I need to make. Um, but otherwise reasonably happy with the wiring effort, getting it all tidied up, get the cabling done, so it's all reasonably secure, um, lots of zip ties in place, um, and also some of that braided sheeting there, just for things like, because there are moving parts, just wanting to make sure nothing pinches at any point. Uh, today's clip is uh, looking at making the cable that joins the Arduino through to the H-Bridge motor driver. Uh, we'll use a bit of braid on this as well to tidy it all up. Um, but to start with, I've cut a number of lengths of wire greater than what I need, um, and I can trim it later on once I've sorted it. I'm going to trim the ends. I usually just chuck it in a little clamp to... And we're going to apply a little bit of solder to each of those. Um, just putting flux on as well just to help with the flow of solder. Doesn't need a whole lot. Soldering iron's already up to temp. So we're just going to effectively tin it with a little bit of solder. Just enough to get it started. Same for the next one. Sorted. Okay, so now we've got that set up and ready to go. We're going to do the same thing on the other end. Usually just separate these out a little bit just so it's easier that they're not touching each other when you sold. You don't want to accidentally solder some of these together. Again, I'm just trimming off a few millimeters off the end, separating them out just to make it easier to solder, clipping them in place, little dab of flux on each. And 
this just really helps the solder flow onto the thing. Sticky is heck mess if you get it on your hands. So I don't recommend doing that. But just enough to tin it. So all we're going to do is put these side by side with the other ones, heat it up, and melt the two together. Cool. So now that we've got that ready, I prefer to do it by hand at this next point. You can put it between the little clips if you want, and just line them up side by side heat it up till it mounts, hold, and then go on to the next one. And if you've got enough solder on both sides, it'll make a nice good contact. So heating up side by side till it mounts. Gentle blow to cool before moving. Now oh, it's got a blob, let's try that one again. Yeah, let's side a bit up. Uh, next one. And then lucky last. Giving that little check that those are a good connection, which they are. Um, so now that we've done that, the next bit is I'm going to put some heat shrink on each of those. So I'm only going to cut a little bit off. It's probably about a centimeter in this case. Round about that. And I'll start at the other end. Feed it through. that travel all the way down to the pieces that you got where your solder joints are we make sure that the heat shrink is directly over So I've got them roughly in the same place there now, which is where I know the joints are. So I have them lined up. Just got a heat gun. Shrinking. Gonna rotate to the other side. Done. Okay, so now we have a, a joint which is reasonably sturdy. We've got the pins so that we can connect onto the H-Bridge motor driver. At the other end, it's just wire which we'll trim to the right length and we'll put that into our connector. Um, so next part is taking some braid just to tidy it up. One catch is when you use braid, uh, after you cut it, the very first thing that you should do, which I haven't done on this one yet, is just grab an open flame and just singe the edge. It just stops the splaying right out. Um, so we're going to feed the wire into the braid and I find if I kind of hold it there, squeeze and pull, it'll come through. So squeeze, pull and then let go, squeeze, pull, let go and it just helps 
feed it on without catching on anything. Keeps it really simple. Until you get it down to about where you want it to be. So I'm going to take it right over the right over this joint. So line that up. So somewhere around about there. I want to have a little bit of room. I'm going to have a little bit of I'll do just a little bit more. Alright, so now that I've got about the right length, we're going to add some heat shrink on this end here. So we still want to have a bit of room for this flexibility. We're going to add heat shrink on this end here as well. So I'm just looking to have some heat shrink just here. I'll probably cut off about an inch or so, maybe an inch and a half. like that. Again we're going to take the end, we're going to thread it through, same thing for the second one, basically want one piece for each end. Now you kind of carefully need to get all the, the little strands inside, if you get a few you can let them just kind of push through and you'll tidy it up on the other end. Sliding through to the end. Okay, so that's about in position. Same for here. So we've got it mostly in. We can go past. If we've got any stray, it's gone past, and we can pull it back out again. So from there. Now we can see where that's about halfway. So it's about half on the braid, half outside of the braid. Again, we'll use the heat gun. Shrink. Looking good, and the same on. This end here. Done. And that way we have a nice braided cable so it's less likely to, if I've got any moving parts that are going past and going to catch, it's not going to tear apart the. The cable gives it a bit of strength, um, especially with moving parts on the droid. Um, and we've got plenty of cable that's left over for trimming up on the top. So I, I had plenty cut over. It's probably a bit more than I needed. Um, but I know roughly around about there is where it's going to be. And just in case I decide to reroute or move things, I can, I can tidy that up. Cool. So that's the end for this clip.